samples will be sent to researchers for final analysis. The crew also took some time to get their SpaceX suits unpacked and ready for the journey home. And since getting the hatches closed just a short while ago, all four astronauts are now suited up and in their seats standing by for dock undocking. We've got a final go no go poll coming up in just a few minutes where the joint SpaceX and NASA teams will make their final call for Dragon to depart the space station. And this is one of many checkpoints in the return that will continue all the way up until just before the deorbit burn. This gives mission managers multiple chances to assess the weather at the splashdown zones and make sure everything is lining up before Dragon departs. So we'll stand by for that final go no go, but for now everything continuing to look good for an on time departure. So with that, I'll throw it back over to Jesse and Leah and Hawthorne. Thanks, Sandra. Separation is set for approximately 10.05 p.m. Pacific time, 5.05 GMT, which is just under 15 minutes from now. At the moment, Dragon is in its final configuration before undocking, and we are waiting for mission operators to conduct their go, no go poll on whether to move forward with un the undocking procedure. And like we mentioned, this is a fully autonomous departure, just like the approach to the space station, meaning that the crew won't be required to conduct any actions while on board. And it makes it even easier this time, since the crew won't have to stop at any waypoints like we see when a vehicle arrives. Once the undocking sequence is complete, Dragon will use its Draco engines to thrust away from the station in a series of carefully choreographed maneuvers or four departure burns to increase the distance between the spacecraft and the space station. From there, a phasing burn will place Dragon on a trajectory back to Earth. Next on its trip home is deorbit entry and landing, which covers all operations after the final departure maneuver. That includes trunk separation, closure of the nose cone, a deorbit burn, deployment of the drogue and main parachutes, and finally splashdown off the Florida coast, at which point our teams will recover the Crew 3 astronauts inside Crew Dragon from the water. We're expecting the call for the go no go poll uh, in just a few minutes or so from now. So it's been six months for these astronauts since they arrived on station, but right. it was only a week ago that we saw Crew 4 arrive on station. Yeah, it's been pretty incredible to see the cadence that we've been able to um, send astronauts up to the International Space Station for these long duration missions. Um, and so exciting that we were able to get Crew 4 up there to be with the Crew 3 astronauts to do the handoff that they do. Yeah, I think that's really valuable because as we saw in, uh, I believe it was November last year, mm -hmm. we brought home Crew 2 before we sent Crew 3. So right. they didn't quite have that uh, handover opportunity just because of some weather uh, issues. We want to make sure we give them the best and most comfortable splashdown possible. Um, but beautiful view of Dragon just moments away now from hearing that go, no go call uh, and our crew members getting ready to come home. Yeah, I'm sure they're pretty excited to, to come back home. Um, they've been up there again for about six months doing science experiments, um, working, you know, up on the International Space Station. Um, so I'm, I'm sure they're probably very excited to come back and see their families uh, back here on planet Earth. I was thinking about that. It's been 175 <laughs> days that they've been on the station. And besides friends and family, what's something that you think you would look forward to coming home to? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think probably the top thing would just be like spending time with my family. Yeah, right. That's the best. Like, uh, you don't get to communicate. They, they do get to communicate with their families, right, on the station. But it's, um, you know, it's almost like a video phone or audio phone call. So like, I think spending time with them in person um, would be really nice. Yeah, it's nothing Dragon like. Dragon SpaceX being... on the big loop for status update. Okay, Raja, just three items to talk through here. The first is that the we saw a good leak check result. The second item is that we are still on track for our departure time of 0500 UTC. And then the last item that I have is that we've identified that the root cause of the timer behavior on your displays is that the vehicle is pulling in bad and GAD data simultaneously. We expect this to uh, resolve itself as soon as we disconnect the umbilicals for departure, and we've seen this behavior before with no concerns. I'll copy. Good leak check. 
check, uh, still on time for 0500, and uh, the timer behavior reset this will fix itself once we pull the umbilical. Good read back. And we just had confirmation that the leak checks aboard Crew Dragon went well. Uh, we have also been waiting for that vestibule leak check to be complete. That's the space between the hatch on the station side, known as the A-pass hatch, and the hatch on the Crew Dragon side. Uh, we want to make sure we Three bring that. Have a big loop. Just make sure to give us a noggins up when you're ready for us to go advisors down so we have time to do that. I'll be sure to read that one up. And we also heard them mention uh, some TDRS or tracking data and relay satellite system time differences that they're seeing on board the capsule. As you heard, it's of no concern. Uh, they are getting this data because they are still connected to the space station. Those umbilicals are, are still attached, so they're receiving data from the space station. And once they are demated and Dragon shifts to its own tracking data and relay satellite link, that uh, time difference won't be an issue anymore. And again, departure is tracking for just about nine minutes from now. It sounds like it is on time. Uh, and again, when they... Uh, when they begin their departure, uh, they will un uh, the dock the undocking procedure will um, begin to unlatch the latches attached to the docking adapter there, um, and then the thrusters will push the vehicle away from the International Space Station. So there is a number of events that do. Um, happen when we begin the undocking sequence um, and then there will be four departure burns uh, that will get them into the trajectory to make their way back home to earth um, and those procedures will take you know just a few minutes i believe it's like five minutes for the undocking procedure it's pretty quick, and if you look now, a beautiful view of Crew Dragon and the International Space Station as they are flying 260 statute miles over the Maldives, traveling at over 17,000 miles per hour. And we're standing by for a call to the crew, waiting to hear uh, that teams here on the ground are go for undocking. And if you're just now joining us, you are looking at a live view of Dragon Endurance with the Crew 3 astronauts already on board Dragon. They're already strapped into their seats, in, uh, into their suits. Um, they've already completed suit leak checks. Um, they've also done a leak check of the hatches on Dragon and the International Space Station. And we're just now awaiting uh, proceeding with the undocking procedure again scheduled for 10.05 uh, p.m. Pacific time or 5.05 GMT. One quick thing you'll notice, the trunk of Dragon, which is on the left, that'll be jettisoned uh, before the capsule re-enters the atmosphere. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop for undock timing. Okay, Dragon, just wanted to let you know that um, our final reconfigurations for undock are complete and nominal. Uh, right now we are uh, pulling go for undocking. Uh, we're going to go with an undock sequence start time of 0505 UTC uh, to give you guys a chance to get your visors down and confirm your readiness for undocking at that planned departure time. I'll copy. The uh, polling go for uh, undock at 0505 for the sequence start time and uh, copy leader go and visor sound. It worked. SpaceX copies. We had a one hour window for this undock timing, so no concerns. Copy, and uh, our visors are down, then copy guys to go for undock.
All right, good news. We just heard the confirmation that Crew Dragon is go to undock. We're now waiting for that undocking sequence to begin, and once that happens, it'll take less than five minutes for Dragon to separate from the International Space Station, its home for the last six months. The first step in the automatic undocking sequence is for the umbilicals to retract. These umbilicals connect Dragon systems to the space station, transferring power, telemetry, and commands between the two vehicles throughout Dragon's stay. Once that's complete, Dragon will unlatch itself from the space station by releasing the 12 hard capture hooks in two separate phases. All that combined will take roughly four and a half minutes, and then Dragon will be ready to depart from the space station and begin to move itself further and further away using its thrusters. And Dragon's initial departure from the station is a little different from other docked vehicles like the Soyuz, which relies on springs to push it away from the docking port. Dragon will actually execute two short thruster firings to undock using a combination of the 12 Draco engines around the base of the capsule, with the first of those firings breaking any stiction between Dragon and the docking port, and the second slowly backing the spacecraft away. We're expecting the call for the undocking sequence to begin within about the next 10 minutes. But like I was pointing out earlier before we heard that go call, um, we have these solar panels, solar cells, I guess is a better term for them, on the trunk of Dragon. Um, and we mentioned that Dragon is still connected to the International Space Station and still connected to the umbilical. So it's receiving power from the station. But once we undock, Dragon gets solar power uh, that will power the vehicle. And then once we are committed to coming home, we'll let go of that trunk. It'll burn up in the atmosphere and our astronauts will splash down safely. We're just around three minutes away from that undocking sequence beginning. We did hear that go for readiness. Um, so we are on track for Crew 3's departure and ready for them to head home back to Earth. And since Crew 4 arrived a week ago, I would call a crew of seven on the space station a full house, but it's been a crew of 11 for the last <laughs> week, so I call it a fuller house. Uh, <laughs> so it'll take the crew complement back down to seven astronauts and cosmonauts aboard the International Space Station. Three of these astronauts were first-time flyers. Tom yeah, Marshburn yeah. is the, the astronaut who had had two previous flights, so everyone's coming home with a little more experience now. Yeah, and I guess this, uh, for their first flight, this is also their first return. Yes. Um, and again, this return will be about a 23-hour ride. Um, so once they undock, um, it won't be, you know, right back down to Earth just yet. They'll, they'll get to cruise uh, in space for a little bit. And they have some off time during that as well. So they'll get to sleep if they want to. They have options to eat meals while on board. I'm sure they'll be enjoying the last few views from space, mm -hmm. sticking close to the window and taking some pictures. And they're currently, they're currently in their suits. Uh, this is a pretty close-up view. Uh, they're currently in their suits, in their seats, um, but once they move away and are a safe distance away from the space station, they can actually get out of their suits, get comfortable, enjoy the ride. We mentioned a couple of those burns that will break, help them break away from the space station and then separate them from the station. Uh, and they are in their suits and they just lowered their visors as well. Uh, this is all precautionary because these are not major burns as I might want to call them. These are uh, slow moving. We want to move pretty carefully when we're around the space station, especially while we're inside the keep out sphere and the approach ellipsoid. Those are two invisible boundaries that we use to monitor the distance uh, of spacecraft arriving and departing. I believe we're coming up on about a minute until the undock sequence begins. And this is such an incredible view from the space station. You can see a portion of the space station with Dragon still docked uh, and Earth in the background. It just looks so incredible there. And that's the Indian Ocean below them right now. Dragon is docked to the Harmony port on the International Space Station, has called that location home for the last six months. We didn't see a port relocation with this vehicle like we saw for Crew 1 and Crew 2. Um, this, has, this has been their home since they arrived back in November. And we're 
and Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. We know we are past the targeted undock time. We are still going to be discussing the timing issues uh, that you are seeing on your displays and on the ground. So stand by for some more words on a new undock time. And that was the core crew operations and resources engineer speaking with the crew on board Dragon. Uh, and there's the core there on your left hand screen. Uh, just mentioning that they are still checking on uh, a couple things that they had their eye on. Um, undocking was scheduled for 10.05 p.m. Pacific time, but there is some uh, margin in the schedule. So uh, once they are, uh, once they clear what they're looking into, um, we should be go for undocking. Yes, the Corps mentioned to the crew, they have an hour window for this undock time. So right. it's a little more leeway than sometimes when we see launches on the ground that have to go at that very second. So right. <laughs> they have time to look through this, um, and that's a, a TDRIS, tracking data and relay satellite system, um, times that they're receiving on Dragon. It's pulling in different two different types of data, and they expect it to resolve itself once Dragon has departed the space station and its umbilicals are no longer attached. But just want to take the moment to to, uh, to discuss that on the ground before they say farewell. And you were talking about the core. Um, that person is here in Hawthorne, but we have someone similar in Houston, and that's the Capcom or the capsule communicator. They are not speaking with the astronauts on the capsule, even though that might sound confusing, they're actually the person who relays information from Mission Control Houston to the astronauts on the space station. So um, those two roles are incredibly important, and we only have those two people that are speaking with the crew. That way there aren't too many voices at one time. It's a, an easy flow of information. And there you can see on your screen, on the left-hand screen, that is Mission Control here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. And on the right side of your screen, a little place that feels like home, is Mission Control Houston at uh, Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. While these crew members were on board since November, it's been six months, like we mentioned, they've seen eight visiting vehicles arrive. That's everything from um, SpaceX 24, the cargo dragon that came up and, and brought resupply and uh, science activities for the crew, as well as progress resupply ships, a North Grumman ship, two SpaceX crew dragons. Not only did they have crew four arrive last week, a few weeks ago, Axiom-1 arrived aboard the International Space Station for a brief stay. Uh, and the Russian Pritchard node module arrived at this time as well. Yeah, that's a lot of uh, spacecraft on the International Space Station. Um, probably pretty cool for the um, uh, crew on board to, you know, get to interact with so many different um, people yeah, arriving I at would, station. I call it space traffic. <laughs> It's essentially what it is, yeah. <laughs> and that's how the astronauts get their food and uh, their supplies. You know, all of the water, or almost all of the water on board is recycled. But uh, we have food sent up for the astronauts in those rehydratable packages. There are also meals ready to eat. That's what the crew on Crew Dragon will have to consume over the next 24-ish hours. Um, but also science experiments. There are always hundreds of experiments happening aboard the International Space Station. We call it our orbiting laboratory, and that's what takes up a lot of the crew members' day. And we do have two versions of the Dragon vehicle. The one that you're seeing on your screen is Crew Dragon, um, and as Lee has mentioned, uh, the Cargo Dragon uh, 
is basically designed to just fully carry cargo um, up to the space station. The Crew Dragon vehicle can also carry cargo as well. It is designed for seven crew members. Um, we have four members on board, so where we would have the other three seats uh, is where we store cargo, which is just basically beneath the crew members on board Dragon. So we can bring some cargo with them uh, on the, the crew vehicle as well. You're just now joining us. You are tuned into the Crew 3 return back to Earth. The Crew 3 members have been on board the International Space Station for about six months now. Um, with Crew 4 now on board station, they've already completed their handoff and they are. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop for undocking. Okay, Endurance, the reason that we paused was that we had assumed that this was going to, that the timing issue was going to stop once 1553 was disconnected. We did not see that actually occur in this case. So we took a look back at some of the data that we had from uh, our previous departures, as well as taking a look into the future about if this were an issue during undocking. And the result of that investigation led us to know that uh, we have seen this behavior before. We had seen the timing issue resolved itself once the umbilicals retracted, and so we are comfortable proceeding with a new undocking attempt at a later time. How copy? Copy, yeah, uh, the 1553 disconnected and fixed with what we expect uh, based on previous, but uh, once we disconnect the umbilicals, it should resolve itself and then standing by for a new undocking time. Good words, and uh, we were also pretty confident that if it were to not, re or if it were still be the case during undocking, we will take some potential pauses uh, if we don't see it resolve itself. Right now, ground is bold. Go for uh, the undocking time at 0515 UTC. So please confirm that your visors are still down and that you're ready for undocking. The uh, undocking sequence starts at 0515, and all visors are down. Speed 6 copies. All right, getting really close now. We heard they're comfortable with uh, that TDRS tracking data and relay satellite system. Uh, time difference that they're seeing, and they expect that to resolve on its own after the umbilicals have retracted. And now we're looking for that undock sequence command to begin in just about two minutes. Again, we had some time to make sure that we uh, have everything planned as we wanted to because this is an hour long undocking window. Coming up on a minute until the undock sequence begins. Again, this undocking sequence will be an automatic undocking sequence. Uh, first, the umbilicals will retract, uh, and then the latches will begin to, the hard latches on um, the docking adapter will unlatch, um, and it'll do that in two phases. It'll be the first six hard latches, and then followed by the second set of six hard latches. Then the vehicle will basically do a couple of burns uh, to push itself away from the International Space Station so that it is at a safe distance before it starts officially making its way back to Earth. Undock sequence commanded. There's copy 
को शुरू करें Oh, believe me, Raja, we saw it. And with that, we have confirmation that the undocking sequence has begun. We have heard that the uh, timing issue that the crews were seeing on the Tedris clocks has been fixed. And with Dragon now getting ready to undock, let's go to Sandra Jones in Mission Control at Johnson Space Center. Thanks, Leah and Jesse. Great to hear that all is proceeding as planned tonight for undocking. As you mentioned, the umbilicals have began to retract, and right now we're working on the sets of hooks to also separate Dragon from the International Space Station. Again, there's two sets of six hooks that we'll be looking to open, so a total of 12 hooks in all. and that first set of hooks has begun to open. Once all 12 hooks are open, Dragon will officially be undocked from the International Space Station, ending its six-month mission aboard the orbiting outpost. And the first set of hooks are open. The second set is underway. And we have committed to undocking from the International Space Station. Crew 4 is heading home. Again, that first set of hooks is open and the second set is underway. Everything continuing to go as planned as the second set of hooks open. And we should be hearing the call here shortly that the second set of, of hooks has opened. All hooks open and nominal.
and the Crew Dragon Endurance has undocked from the International Space Station. Four astronauts aboard the orbital outpost completing their six-month mission. That undocking did occur at 12.20 a.m. Central Time, 1.20 a.m. Eastern Time, while the International Space Station was flying southeast over Australia. The first undocking burn also Part proceeded nominally. And with the series of departure burns now underway. Copy. And a great view of Dragon as it departs from the International Space Station. Next up will be the rest of the series of departure burns that will continue to push Dragon further from the space station. And with Dragon now successfully undocked from the space station, again that undocking occurring at 12.20 central time, 12.20 a.m. central time, 1.20 a.m. eastern time, just southeast of Australia. I'll hand it back over to Jesse and Leah in Hawthorne to walk us through the next phases of return. So some great news and great views. Uh, Dragon is now undocked from the International Space Station. We have already completed departure burn zero. Um, that's a short burn of Dragon's Draco thrusters. Lasts about 16 seconds long. That increases the speed that Dragon is flying away from station and sends it on its trajectory, taking it up and around the orbiting laboratory. That departure burn zero sets the Crew Dragon Endurance crew with Raja, Tom, Kayla, and Matias on their journey home. Now on a trajectory to head up and over the station before additional maneuvers will change the orbital path and take Crew Dragon below and in front of the station. Dragon will autonomously accomplish that through three additional departure burns to get the four astronauts of Crew 3 well away from the space station on their way to home. What you're looking at on your screen on the left side is a view from Dragon looking at the International Space Station. And on the right side is a view from the International Space Station looking back at Dragon. <laughs> and now on the left side is the view inside Crew Dragon Endurance, looking over the seat of the commander and the pilot. You can see the screens they're using to monitor their journey back home, but again, they don't need to do make any actions uh, to continue Dragon's flight. This is all autonomous, and they use those screens to monitor the vehicle systems as well as where they are in the process. Another really cool view from the International Space Station can see Dragon in your bottom right hand corner as it is moving slow and steady away from the International Space Station. Uh, we want to make sure that the vehicle is safe um, before it begins its uh, several maneuvers to make its way back down to Earth. Uh, we have already completed burn zero, which is the first of four of the departure burns. And hearing reports that trajectory is nominal or as planned for Crew Dragon Endurance. We're standing by for that depart burn, depart burn one, I should say, in about a minute and a half. Uh, this will increase the opening rate between Crew Dragon and the station. And again, there are no hold points during this departure sequence. We see crew members arrive uh, and it, it, they stop at waypoint two or one or zero. Sometimes they're able to pass through after some go, no go poles, but it takes a le lot less time to depart than it does to arrive. So again, standing by for that next departure burn happens about five minutes after separation. So only about a minute from now. This is a cool view as Dragon is making its way out of the view. Uh, you can see how slow and steady it, it was hard to tell, but now that Dragon is out of the view, um, you can kind of see how slow it was moving away from the International Space Station.
again, as Leah mentioned, if you're just now joining us, we have completed departure burn zero, and we are now awaiting departure burn one coming up next. And you can tell it's a little bit darker outside now. That's because the Crew Dragon and International Space Station have entered an orbital nighttime. They circle the Earth every 90 minutes, so they see a sunrise or a sunset every 45 minutes. And uh, they are now flying just southwest of New Zealand, about 271 statute miles over Earth. And you can see on your screen some bursts happening there. These are the burns. Uh, Dragon is using its Draco thrusters uh, to maneuver itself away from the International Space Station. That was a pretty cool view. <laughs> Dragon, you are go to doff your suits per procedure 4.012. And this is a reminder that ground will be deactivating the big loop following exit from the approach ellipsoid. That is affirmative. Thanks very much, and uh, Station Endurance, uh, thanks for the uh, form send off. Good luck to Expedition 67. It was great being up there with you guys. I can't wait to see uh, the awesome work you guys continue to do on that amazing order of the laboratory up there. Dragon has exited the keyboard sphere. And confirmation that both depart burn zero and one are now complete. And Crew Dragon has exited the keep out sphere. That's the imaginary boundary or sphere about 200 meters in radius around the station. It's one of several safety zones. And Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground for some suit doffing actions. on uh, Dragon to Ground for some nothing actions. Okay, uh, the cameras have been taken external, so you guys are go for uh, those suit doffing actions. Just one note for you, Tom, when you are getting out of your suit, if you want to go ahead and give me a call, I have a couple of uh, things that we'd like to do uh, to inspect your umbilical just to get a better understanding of if there's anything out of config. I'll copy. Copy all. Cameras are going external, and I'll give you a call before I. I'm taking off my gloves right now, but I'll give you a call before I start suit nothing. And copy that, Tom. We can probably delay this until you're uh, fully out of the suit, so it's nice and uh, easy. Okay, copy. Give you a call once I'm out of the suit. And SpaceX, how do you hear on Greg of the ground on the captain mic? And I've got you five by five on the counter mic. We've got you the same. That call coming from the core here in Hawthorne to the crew aboard Crew Dragon, letting them know the cameras will be off while they take off their spacesuits and get into some comfortable clothes for the journey home. As we mentioned, they have exited the keep out sphere, that 200 meter boundary around the space station. They're now about 300 meters away from the station. But before moving in out into the keep out sphere, spacecraft have to be configured where they would not cross that imaginary boundary for at least four orbits, even if the spacecraft lost all maneuvering. And we are now waiting for Dragon to exit the approach ellipsoid, or the AE, which is another imaginary shape. This time it's a three-dimensional ellipsoid measuring four by two by two kilometers in the same family as the keep-out sphere. Now one of the key differences with the AE is that vehicles outside of it, outside it, have to be on what we call a 24-hour safe free drift trajectory. Now that means the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, again, even if it lost all maneuvering. So we are waiting for that call out. 
that dragon is outside of the, the AE. That's the uh, next call out that we're waiting for. We also heard the uh, core talking to Thomas Mar uh, Marshburn mm -hmm. about the umbilical on his suit. They were just talking about the umbilical that connects his spacesuit to the dragon itself. That helps provide calm, um, cooling air while they're mm -hmm. in the suits. Of course, while they are in their more comfortable clothes for this journey home, he won't be connected to that and they can talk through a cabin microphone instead. Yeah, and they did also mention that they can doff their suits or remove their suits. Um, so as Leah mentioned, they are starting to get comfortable um, and they do have, you know, a 23 hour journey on the way back home. So um, <laughs> it'll be nice to get out of those those suits, even though they are like a personal AC system for them. So. They look comfortable. <laughs> Again, we are waiting for the Dragon vehicle to confirm that it is outside of the approach ellipsoid or the AE. And everything has been uh, moving pretty smoothly for Dragon so far. We are on a nominal or normal trajectory. And the next burn isn't coming up for another 42 minutes. So Dragon is still cruising on those burns, depart burns zero and one that we actually saw. I yeah. love that view. <laughs> And those burns come from the service section, Draco thrusters. Um, those are used for smaller maneuvers rather than the bulkhead Draco thrusters, which are under the nose cone. Uh, those are used for the larger maneuvers like the deorbit uh, burn. And Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground, no response required. But cabin temperature is now allowed via 4.080 and the cabin is currently configured for maximum cooling. So you guys have uh, crew control as of now. Sounds like they're getting the cabin comfortable for the crew members. And the crew members can control the temperature on Crew Dragon, or they can ask the ground to control it for them. Uh, nice to have that option. Yeah, and as you mentioned, uh, we got to see the Draco thrusters. I think that was like one of the coolest views that uh, I've been able to see. Um, they, there's uh, 12 thrusters in the service section and they're all actually pointing in different directions. And that's so that it basically has a 360 degree control um, uh, of Dragon as it's, you know, maneuvering out in space. So it was really cool to see all of them firing at the same time. <laughs> We're about halfway out of the approach ellipsoid. That's that four kilometer by two by two kilometer uh, imaginary shape. Actually, I've heard it called the pizza box because pizza of its box? yes, because of its <laughs> shape um, around the International Space Station. And so we use this and the keep out sphere for all vehicles that arrive and depart uh, the International Space Station. That helps the teams monitor um, where vehicles are if they're ready to cross those boundaries and eventually dock or undock with this station. And again, we're here in Hawthorne, but teams in Mission Control Houston are also monitoring because we are still in joint operations. Uh, that happens when Dragon is inside the approach ellipsoid. So once Dragon crosses that boundary, it will come back to Hawthorne as the prime monitoring uh, location for the vehicle. But while we're close or docked to the International Space Station, we're in those joint operations. So it's been six months of these teams working together on Crew 3, but uh, they continue working together every day because we have crew four on board as well. And there you can see the teams on your screen. On your left hand screen is Mission Control Hawthorne and on your right hand screen is Mission Control Houston. And even though we undocked a little bit later than the initial time, uh, we had that hour long window of undock opportunities. And so we don't expect uh, a change to the splashdown time. We're still targeting tomorrow night around 9.43 p.m. Pacific or 1.43 a.m. Eastern off the coast of Florida. There will be teams out on a boat to recover the crew after they splash down. And after splash down, they'll be removed from the vehicle. Uh, they will go through some casual medical checks and uh, 
then eventually board a helicopter and be brought back to land where they will board a NASA jet to fly back to see their families in Houston. If you're just now joining us, you are watching the live undocking of the Crew-3 crew from the International Space Station. So far, they have undocked from the space station. Um, they've completed uh, two burns so far, uh, burn zero uh, and burn one of the departure burns. Um, we, are, we do have two more burns um, coming up as they make their way further and further away from the International Space Station and get the vehicle on a trajectory to make its way back home to Earth. And we're about 700 meters away from the International Space Station. So that seems to have happened pretty quickly for very small and short burns. Um, but things move pretty smoothly when you're in space. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, departure is a lot faster um, than uh, docking to the International Space Station. You know, th that 700 meters would take quite a bit of time because it's a sl very slow approach. But I think moving away uh, seems to be a lot faster, which is probably nice for the, the crew members. Uh, and again, they don't have to, they don't have waypoints that they need to stop at either. So it probably helps with, um, you know, making the, the departure a lot faster. Exactly. And we talked a little bit about how Crew Dragon will move above the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. uh, this slows the vehicle down because what keeps the space station moving at orbital velocity, 17,500 miles per hour, is that it's trying to travel forward, but Earth's gravity is continually pulling it down. So that keeps it in that orbit around Earth constantly. So moving Dragon above the space station reduces the pull of Earth's gravity and helps it slow down. So the space station will actually pass in front of Crew Dragon, and then Crew Dragon will later re-enter the atmosphere. Yeah, and I think sometimes people forget how quickly the vehicles are moving, especially um, when we got to see, you know, Dragon moving slowly away from the International Space Station. They're still going 17,500 miles per hour at that point, um, which is incredibly fast. <laughs>
Okay, uh, before that, I just wanted to give you the call that uh, Dragon has exited the approach ellipsoid and is on a safe free drift trajectory. Houston's going to be taking down that big loop shortly, so expect the ISS audio traffic to cease. All right, we just heard some chatting between the core here on the ground and the crew members aboard the aboard Crew Dragon Endurance. Uh, they are now outside of the approach ellipsoid, that four kilometer by two kilometer by two kilometer shape, uh, invisible shape, I should say, around the International Space Station, which we use to monitor arriving and departing vehicles. Now, we were just talking about how Crew Dragon was going to come home by moving aboard above the International Space Station. I said it was due to gravity that it would slow down, but it's actually due to relative velocity. So <laughs> the uh, space station is closer to Earth. It will appear to move forward from Crew Dragon, and Crew Dragon will then lower itself, enter the atmosphere, and come home. But everything is moving really smoothly for the astronauts and their journey home on Crew Dragon Endurance. Yeah, and 
Very exciting crew three on their way back home. Now NASA astronauts Roger Chari, Tom Marshburn, Kayla Barron, and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer have departed the International Space Station. It will take them about 23 hours until they make their way back home to planet Earth. Next up, the crew, uh, they've already doffed their suits and they are settling in for the flight home. So as they rest up, our teams here will continue to keep an eye on the weather to ensure a safe return to to Earth for Dragon and our Crew 3 astronauts. And though our coverage here in Hawthorne is wrapping up, we're going to turn it over to the NASA team in Houston to take us through the next phases of the Crew 3 mission. NASA TV will stay on the air for continuous live coverage along Crew 3's journey home. So for those of you watching online on NASA's YouTube, take a look at the description below the video and you'll find the new link for the Crew 3 coast phase. Live coverage will continue at that new location shortly. But if you're watching on NASA TV, don't touch that dial. You won't notice a thing and coverage will continue. And meanwhile, SpaceX's YouTube channel will join live coverage starting roughly one hour prior to splashdown. And as always, you can find mission updates on Twitter at NASA at SpaceX and on the web at NASA.gov. Thanks for watching and may the 4th be with you. <laughs>And if you're just joining us, four astronauts as part of Crew 4 are on their way back to Earth after a six-month science mission aboard the International Space Station. Those astronauts include NASA astronaut Raja Chari, Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron, as well as European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Moore. Crew 4 undocked from the International Space Station earlier this evening at 12.20 a.m. Central Time. Could you guys help us uh, to 